Right, okay, we're in. So welcome to the latest episode of uh, From the Rock to the Cloud. Uh, as you know, we talk all things Windows Server, specifically uh, discussing exciting topics around our technology that basically most of us didn't even know existed. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk all about um, something very exciting today. And as always, we've got a very, very special guest. My guest today, um, she grew, I just found out she grew up on a farm and she's got an amazing tractor tattoo, which is just blown me away. Um, not many people with a tractor tattoo. So she's really, really special um, and also probably slightly bonkers to put a tractor tattoo on, on her arm, but the fair play. Um, so we've got Sarah with us, Sarah Lean. So Sarah, you're all the way up in Glasgow, aren't you? How are you getting on today? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for that introduction, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologise. I try to embarrass people as much as possible. It's it okay. sets the tone for the whole <laughs> whole chat. Um, so, Sarah, today we're going to talk about um, the excitement of Windows Admin Center, which um, is is quite a new sort of innovation. Um, WAC WAC, as it's as it's known. So we're going to talk WAC, or we're not going to talk WAC, but we're going to talk about WAC. Uh, today. So, um, Sarah, do you want to just give the audience a little introduction to yourself that's a bit better than mine, um, just so that we know who you are and why you're qualified to talk to us about WAC today? Yes. So, my job at Microsoft is as a senior cloud advocate, which means I help the community understand your technologies and also try and fix some of the issues that you might have. So I'm based in the Azure engineering team. So any of the feedback that you have, I push back to the engineering team and then act as that conduit as well. Um, but before I did this role, I was a uh, died in the wool sysadmin, IT pro, used to fight with servers, used to fight with those horrible little server cage nuts and, and lose blood and sleep over all of that fun stuff. So I've been on that kind of journey from that that sysadmin person to someone that looks at the cloud and, and somewhere in the middle, I think, is, is a nice sweet spot with, with where I am at, to be honest, Tom. Cool. Um, well, look, um, I, I always love talking to, to people who actually know their, their schniz, which is brilliant. Like, I love that. So I'm really, really looking forward to today's topic, which is Windows Admin Center. So let's jump right into that. And hopefully, at the end of this episode, no one's putting in the comments that that was, well, maybe they should say it was whack. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, we're like <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed people understand uh, the real meaning of WAC uh, after we've had our yeah. chat today. So what is Windows Admin Center? So Windows Admin Center is a, a GUI based, browser based platform where we can do things with Windows Server. So we can do those tasks that we have to do every day, or whether it be check event logs, um, delete or renew certificates, a whole bunch of tasks basically within the Windows Admin Center. So it's a tool set to help you manage your Windows servers. Okay, and it's GUI? Yes, so it's, it's, it's graphical user interface based. So it's, it's point and click, Tom. So I love that because I'm not a coder. Okay. I can't code to save myself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, point and click, always great. <laughs> Okay, so nothing to do with Slimer and Ghostbusters. That's fine. It's just it's it's a it's a graphical interface that people can just use point and click. Got it. Sweet. So it's a GUI interface, and um, you know, does it work across on-prem cloud? What's the what's the significance of like 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 why have we done this? Why have we, why well, you know why have we made this 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 Windows Admin Center? What you know, what's the benefit? So it's kind of a modernization of the tools that we're used to. So if you've ever used an MMC Snap-in, so the Microsoft Management Console or the RSAT tools, so the Remote Server Admin tools, I think that's what that meant. Absolutely. Um, people know that they are, they're great tools, but they are a bit clunky and you often have to open multiple windows all the time in order to manage multiple servers. And I definitely got confused back in the day and sometimes maybe stopped the wrong service on the wrong box. Um, but what the Windows Admin Center does is just modernize those tools. It's not entirely a replacement, Tom. There's still some things you'll need to use the MMC snap-ins for. But the Windows yeah. Admin Center is the modernized tool um, and it can manage your servers regardless of where they are. So they could be on-prem, they could be physical, they could be um, virtual, they could live in Azure, they could live in other cloud providers. As long as the tool can get access to them on the various different ports that it uses, then you can use this um, regardless. Cool. So it's basically just an upgraded way of doing the traditional the traditional management of single servers, but putting it all into one place. Oh, cool. So Pretty much, yeah. I'd imagine something like that is expensive. Uh, is it not? Is it not expensive? Well, it was 
you know, what are we charging people for that? This is entirely free. Um, the only, well, when I say free, you do have to have a Windows Server license or a Windows 10 license. But obviously, if yeah. you're looking to manage Windows servers, you've got a Windows Server license, hopefully. So it's completely free if you already have an existing server license or a Windows 10 license. So it's a great addition to your tools. So Microsoft is giving free goo. That's whack. Sorry, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it together. Sorry, I apologize. I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. So, um, it, once you've got sorry, once you've got your 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 Windows Admin Center set up, can you extend that? You mentioned third parties or other you know other things that you can not just Windows Server, you can manage other things. Can you get third party support for it? Like, how does that work? So yes, you can have um, what we have it, it called extensions within it. And we have several of our hardware vendors who have created extensions. So people like HP, Fujitsu, mm -hmm. Data On have got extensions that you can help manage some of your hardware as well, which is great. But there's also an SDK available. So if you're a developer, which I'm not, um, you can actually develop your own extension. So if there's something that the tool doesn't do right now, you can actually build on that ecosystem and you can contribute that either just internally yourself. So you can build that extension for internal use or you can actually contribute it to the, the fuller ecosystem and share it with everybody. So um, there's extendability there if you want to try and build on this tool. So the team are very encouraging for those third party extensions to be built. Sweet. It sounds like we've actually moved a massive step forward in the last few years because we're starting to think about everything working together and being connected, which is kind of, you know, I'm I'm learning as we're talking. So this is great. So it just means that like Windows Admin Center is that kind of that one place where, you know, everybody can just pull in all their resources and make it work. Now, I've heard that Windows Admin Center uses PowerShell under the hood. First of all, what's this hood that everybody talks about? And um, that's question one. But then actually, can you use these you, you know can i see these scripts actually working and and, and how that and how it uses them can you know that's the i suppose the question but first of all what's this hood tell me about the hood yes yeah, so it's really just behind the scenes tom so as i said it's a, it's a graphical user interface so it's point and click but behind the scenes is using powershell and things like https win rm wmi queries so yes you can actually see some of these powershell scripts that you can take and leverage for something else or use them as inspiration to put together your own powershell scripts if you need to so yeah and um, do you want me to actually show you this do you want me to give you a demo of what windows admin center is and take you through some of this well so you're going to show me under the hood? Well, I'll show you how to use Windows Admin Center. I'll show you some of the awesome features that we've okay, talked about. Cool. about that? Let's do it. Let's do this. We're, let, let's go crazy. Let's do this. Right. <laughs> Awesome. So here I am in my Windows Admin Center and it's browser based. So I'm looking at a bunch of servers that I have. Um, so I'm managing six or seven servers here. These servers all live in my office. So they're all um, within a hardware um, environment here in my office. But you can see I can I have a list of those servers. I don't have to remember the IP addresses. I don't necessarily need even need to remember the the, the server names or even um, log in to these servers with the password. So the password is kind of stored in Windows Admin Center when you set it up and then you can start to manage these servers. So I think it's pretty cool um, being able to do this. As I said, you can manage your servers, whether they're physical hardware, whether they're based on-prem or in the cloud. Now, if we connect to one of the servers, we can start to see what's happening within this server. So once it loads up, we have the overview of what's happening in the server. So we've got like the server name, we've got the operating system version. We've kind of got that task manager view of what's happening to the CPU and the memory, things like that. So it gives us an overview of what's happening to that server without actually connecting into that server via like an RDP tool. Now, the power is down the left hand side of this tool, though, so we can see all the different things that you can interact with the server. So again, like I was saying earlier, if you want to check on a certificate, if you want to import a certificate, export a certificate, you can have a look at all of this. You have that same interface. You can interact with the server through Windows Admin Center. So yeah, it's a familiar and easy to understand um, kind of platform. As you can see, it kind of looks like even server manager that you get on Windows Server. So it's an easy one, I think, to learn and get used to and interact with. Um, we've got obviously network adapter and um, we can go in and change things here. Probably wouldn't change the IP address remotely. You probably want to actually log on to the box and be there when you're doing it. But you have okay. that interactivity with it. 
Um, you've also got things like settings. So it uncovers some of your settings as well. So if you wanted to change the power configuration of your server, or if you wanted to enable or disable remote desktop, you have that power here as well. So you can see it's quite intensive and there's quite a lot of features that are serviced up within it. Now, when I talked about the extensions, we do have um, a, a plethora of extensions within here. Now, some of them come pre-installed for you, some of the pre default ones that you would maybe expect to see. Um, but as you can see here, we have a list of ones that we have, even like we've got the Dell ones, we've got HPE ones, um, and you can add in obviously your own ones. If you wanted to install an extension that wasn't already installed, it's really easy to do. All you do is find the extension that you want to install from the list. So in this case, I'm going to look at containers. So I click on containers and then I click on install. And what Windows Admin Center will do is go and find that file or the configuration that needs to download, install that, win that, that extension. It will refresh itself automatically for you. You don't have to do anything. And then when we start to go back into our servers, if we have a look here, what we'll see is we now have that container um, blade surfaced up within our server. So we can click on containers and then we can start to actually do containers. So if you wanted to install containers on this server, it would actually help you walk through that process and have a look at it all. Now, when you asked me about the PowerShell scripts, if you click the little PowerShell um, icon in the top right hand corner, it will actually surface up all the scripts and you can see from the list here, we've got a bunch of scripts available. So there's lots there within um, there. So you can take those scripts, you can copy them, you can paste them, you can you can change them, you can take them elsewhere. But that's really under the hood, um, as you said, Tom. So yeah, hopefully that's kind of given you a quick overview and made some more sense of what's actually happening um, with Windows Admin Center and what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wow, uh, it, it, it's actually in, incredibly simple interface. I'm I'm super impressed. Um, no, so thanks for showing us that. The um, you know, everyone's favourite subject um, when it comes to technology is security. How mm -hmm. does how does Windows Admin Center help with security? I suppose across an estate of multiple servers, whether they be in the cloud or on prem. How does it how does it handle that? So it uses HTTPS technology to do that that talking, if you want to call it that. Um, also, as I said, it uses PowerShell, it uses WMI queries over um, WinRM, and we have support for LAPS, which is the local admin password solution. Um, and we have access control based on Active Directory or Azure Active Directory as well. So there's lots of security built in there depending on what aspect of security you're actually concerned about. But yeah, it's, it's built with security in mind, to be honest, Tom. Brilliant. Um, that always gives people a little bit of peace of mind, which, um, you know, it's good to good to know. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we're talking a lot now, as the world's getting more complicated, we're talking about hyper-converged infrastructure. So can I manage a hyper-converged infrastructure with Windows Admin Center? You know, that's, I suppose, a question that some people might want to know. Yeah, so if you're running that on a Windows Server 2016 box or a 2019 box, absolutely, you can use your HDI interfaces there as well and manage that as well. And when we look to some of the newer technology we've just released, so Azure Stack HDI, um, you actually have the power within Windows Admin Center. So when you look at Azure Stack HDI, Windows Admin Center is built into that admin um, experience for you. So if you've ever if you're going to use that, if you're going to deploy that, then you'll have to get familiar with Windows Admin Center because those kind of two technologies are based together. Um, so yeah, the HDI piece is absolutely something that we can support and do. Brilliant. And so do you need Windows Admin Center uh, or does it require System Center uh, to work? Is that are the two linked? What's, what's the story there? Um, so I'm often asked this, a, a lot of customers have used System Center, the various different platforms um, around there, and they're great tools, but they're not a replacement. Windows Admin Center does not replace any of your System Center tools. Um, they complement each other, so you can use them side by side, but they're definitely not a replacement. One is not a replacement for the other. Okay, that's cool. And, you know, when um, some people are, you know, looking into admin center there's a couple of versions out there there's you know the i suppose the the full flavor version and then there's also a preview version uh, or people might have come across a preview version what is the difference which, which one should i use 
So when you look at Windows Admin, like you said, we have the GA version, which is the generally available version, and that's the, the production ready environment that is the fully supported, fully stable environment. Um, so you can use that with production support in mind and the team, you know, if you have any issues, then you can log a support call and, and things like that. When you look at the preview version, what it's allowing you to do is um, a crystal ball almost into the future. So the team will use the preview to show you features that they're potentially developing so that they can get feedback from yourself or features that they have been developing and are almost ready to go into production. But it's that last stage of testing, they're trying to battle harden those new features. So the preview feature yeah. um, is something you could run. Um, Obviously, I always say with preview features, to be honest, is be mindful that they are previews, so they might be buggy, they might be unstable, and they might not even release some of the features that are in a preview um, to production. So don't get too attached to things within preview. Um, and if you are using a preview feature, I always say give feedback back as well, because that's why we have the feedback um, functionality within uh, sort of the preview um, features um, because we want feedback from our customers, our audience. We want to understand if they're the right things that we're going down, if there's additional features. So it depends on your appetite for risk a wee bit, to be honest, Tom. If you're happy <laughs> using something that isn't fully productionized and could be buggy I'm, and I'm might give that. you some issues. I'll, I'll use the normal version. I'll use the normal version, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, but either could be run, just be aware that obviously the full fat kind of generally available version is production ready, whereas the preview one might not be fully production ready. Okay, that's, it, it, it's funny, I'm seeing, there's a theme coming through here, like we, we talked to Thomas as well, who, who I know you know, and he was talking about wizards, and you've mentioned uh, GUI, which I, in my head I'm like Ghostbusters, and then you're talking about like crystal <laughs> balls, which I'm like, you know, like I, I'm sort of, you know, seeing, you know, Shrek and the, and you know, the fairy godmother from Shrek. I, I just kind of see all of this stuff as like magic. Do you know what I mean? And it just works, yeah. which I love. So, <laughs> sorry, tenuous link. Uh, but um, <laughs> say I can use Windows Admin Center with Azure. Is that mm -hmm. possible as well? Can I can I just use it with Azure? Like what's like what's the whole tie in with the? Because I'm on prem, I'm managing my servers, but I might want to use some Azure resources, right? So that's the kind of even more magic. How does that work? Yeah, so I, I think a lot of customers are looking towards potentially leveraging parts of Azure to maybe enhance some of their on-prem environment. So they want to have a management tool that can do both, right? No one likes to use multiple management tools, Tom. We all hate that. We want to get away from that kind of world. And Windows Admin Center is built with that kind of hybrid solution in mind. So um, what you can do is use some of the tools within Azure to manage your Windows server. So say, for example, updates. So everyone has to apply updates to the Windows servers you can manage the Azure that's a magic word we don't mention no 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 we love updates we love yeah. updates um, so that's a prime example. There's a service in Azure called the Azure Update Management Service where you can kind of automate the patching of your servers, which is great. But you can manage that within in Windows Admin Center as well. You don't have to go to the Azure portal to do all of that configuration. Um, so yeah, there, there's definitely a tie in there if you're starting to look at um, adding features and functionality from Azure to your on-prem environment. Windows Admin Center can help be that conduit to get to that. Um, I can actually show you a demo um, of us creating a Azure virtual machine from within Windows Admin Center if you want Tom. Go for it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I love I love it when this happens. <laughs> let me, Go. Let me fire it up. So I will yeah. say this is a demo because it, it takes a few minutes to actually do and no one wants to sit and watch a, a live virtual machine being created. So let me fire up the video and, and we'll get this started Tom. Yeah that's cool. Get the crystal ball. So working. again, we're in. <laughs> so again, we're in um, the Windows Admin Center console here, and I'm just showing you that this is connected to Azure. And basically, I just had to sign in with my username and password to register this Windows Admin Center with my Azure subscription. Um, but well, as I said, what we can actually do here is create a virtual machine from within Windows Admin Center in Azure. So we can add in here if we go down to the very bottom. 
And what you'll be walked through is a wizard, Tom. You'll be get you'll get those questions that you will get when you're creating a virtual machine within Azure. So you'll be asked about the resource group that you want to put this virtual machine in. You'll be asked the name and the region that you want to store this virtual machine in. The same kind of questions you get when you do it within the Windows admin portal. So I'm going to build a 2019 data center core virtual machine. I put in my username and password. Um, hopefully very secure username and password here. Yeah. I get to choose Over the <laughs> I get to choose the size. So I'm just going to pick the smallest size because it's core, so it should run on a very small one here. I also have the, the option here to actually domain join it. So if you're domain joining your servers, then you can do this from this wizard as well. So it's great from that point of view and it saves you having to do that manual step yourself. Now, it does take a few minutes for this to go and deploy that virtual machine into your Azure environment. But once it's complete, we can actually go into the Azure portal and start to interact with that virtual machine. Or we could actually add it in here to the Windows Admin Center console and start to manage it just like any other server within our environment. So there you go. That's that virtual machine created. Now, what I want to show you is a cool new feature that we have released and it's a preview feature is actually Windows Admin Center built into the Azure portal. So if you have um, virtual machines servers within um, Azure, you can actually use Windows Admin Center to manage it from within the Azure portal. Um, now, this is a preview feature and it's exciting to see what the team are doing here. But basically, if you have a look at the screen right now, it's identical to what we've just saw that we had on prem. Now, some of the caveats around this obviously are it's a preview service and the team are trying to look at how it can help people um, manage their environment and manage their environment from within Azure. What we saw with our um, Windows Admin Center on prem was that we had a list of I think it was six or seven servers I was managing at the time. With this um, extension within the Azure portal is you're only managing that one server. So you have to enable Windows Admin Center for all of your servers within Azure. So although that's an extra step, an extra hassle as such, to be honest, Tom, um, it does give you that instant feedback from the server. So if you wanted to do something, you know, here I'm I'm modifying my firewall, rightly or wrongly. And um, if I needed to do that quickly on an Azure virtual machine and I didn't have, you know, my Windows Admin Center console or my laptop with me, I was, you know, sitting in a, a hotel room or whatever. Um, I can do this from within the Azure portal. So it's very clever, that technology that we have. And it's nice to see that the team are, again, extending the tool that we love, Windows Admin Center, into Azure and vice versa. You know, we saw earlier on in the demo that Windows Admin Center is extending up to Azure as well. So, yeah, that's just yeah. a little bit of flavor of Azure and Windows Admin Center. No, oh, I, I love it so because it's well. First of all, uh, there's a wizard in there, so I like to see Dumbledore doing a bit of w Dumbledore doing a bit of work for us, <laughs> um, which is always great. Um, but um, I, you know, I like seeing that you've shown us a bit of the future, which is actually this is the it's the cloud bit talking to the on-prem bit, and then the on-prem bit talking to cloud, and the two can cross pollinate, and that I suppose is is you know that's the that's the future for so many people out there, especially when we think about you know, edge computing workloads and all of this kind of other stuff that is happening right now in the IT world, what we need is is, the, is a, sp a safe place and a space to be able to do these things and work properly. So if the audience out there want to start this journey on, uh, I suppose, their wizard training, um, they want to find out more about WAC or, 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 or Windows Admin Center, where, where can they go? Where would you advise them to go and start their journey? So I've created a, a short URL that you can head off to. So if you go to aka.ms slash server dash WAC, so W-A-C, it will take you through to the Windows Admin um, Center documentation. You can have a read uh, some of the features that I maybe haven't mentioned today, and you can also download a copy of it as well and have a play with it. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing tonight. Uh, I'm going to be all over that WAC. There we are. Uh, right. OK, so um, now uh, we move on to the fun part, Sarah. So this is where the uh, the fantastic producers of this uh, this live stream slash podcast slash chat uh, like to sort of, I suppose, take almost the mickey out of me a little bit because I don't really know what I'm talking about. And they kind of pull that out. So um, what, the, what we do is we have this thing called the server meme review. Um, so okay. they uh, obviously they're very down with the kids. Uh, I've just turned 40, so not too down with the kids. 
So they like to they like to poke fun at me. But what they also know is is that because I'm talking to a server expert, you'll get the meme and I won't. So uh, they yeah. No uh, well, oh, fingers crossed, fingers <laughs> crossed. Now, um, just for the audience, if you've got a meme that you want to send in or you want to leave a comment, make sure you do underneath this uh, underneath this video. Um, and right, Sarah, we're going to have a look at the first meme now, and um, I suppose let's 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 see what they found for us today. Meme number one. <laughs> it says <laughs> network cable and plug. Good lord. Um, I, <laughs> is it, I have is worked it, in I server suppose, rooms that look like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I, I suppose, uh, like often, I suppose people have that person in the business that um, they think they can fix things and they go into that room and then they start messing around with stuff and then that's the result, right? Yep. <laughs> that's horrible. Call, that's hurting my eyes. <laughs> And then they call Sarah and they say, "Hey, Sarah, um, can we can we move to the cloud?" <laughs> <laughs> now that's that really that is that is whack. Uh, that's that's that someone's done a terrible job of their network. Even I know that that um, that that that, 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 that yeah. your network cable shouldn't be in that sort of condition. So I can appreciate that. Um, so yeah, dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay. Um, right, well, let's have a look at the second one. Let's see what the second meme, uh, server meme is. Right, three, two, one, here we go. Uh, server's down, <laughs> I should post memes. <laughs> is, it, is that... It's a cat. Is that, is that cat wearing a suit? It looks like it. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, well, I think I've what we've, like we've done... <laughs> What we've done is they they found a meme that um, basically brings the two most powerful things on the internet, servers, because obviously the internet's run by servers, and cats, um, which uh, the two most powerful things on the internet together in one meme. Um, there we are. Um, the yes. have, you, have you ever posted a server meme, Sarah? I don't know. Probably not, actually. No. I don't. Yeah, no. I'm not. a Yeah, I like looking at memes, but I don't think I post off that many. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, that's your homework for the uh, for this evening, anyways. To um, to send me send me a meme. Uh, perfect. Well, uh, um, I think you know it's been great chatting to you, Sarah. Um, just to rec uh, re uh, recap, um, we've learned about um, GUI, which is 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 the graphical interface behind WAC, which is Windows Admin Center. It's completely free. Uh, which is, you know, um, we get few enough fr free things in this world, and you just need to make sure you've got the right licensing behind your, 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 you know, your licenses for Windows uh, Server, which is, you know, pretty straightforward. And it can manage anything, whether it be on-prem or in the cloud, Azure, the whole caboodle, kit and caboodle. It does the whole lot. Uh, it really is uh, sort of uh, the new hybrid uh, landscape for partners to be able to use and do what they need to do. So look, Sarah, thank you so, so much for today. Really appreciate your time. And I always, like I said, I always love talking to an expert. I'm sure uh, that we're gonna, well, hopefully one day we can get up to Glasgow and chat in person. That'd be amazing. Yeah, um, but in the meantime, you know, let's, I'm sure there'll be another episode with you on it too. Um, so we look very much forward to, to, to having you again, if we can, and um, if you can spare the time, um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. So look, everybody, thanks so much for listening to the episode today. Um, like I said, we've been very, very lucky having Sarah with us. Um, keep an eye out for, 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 for all future episodes. And if you've got anything you want us to talk about, let us know. We're really interested to know your thoughts and feedback. If you've got any comments, even if you just got a silly meme, send it over to me and make me look stupid. We very much appreciate it. So thanks very much for joining us from the rock to the cloud. Uh, and look forward to that next episode. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.